everyone, Joey here, and today we're going to do a full setup guide for Xenia Canary, the best Xbox 360 emulator on PC, and we're going to talk about how to install it, set it up, add patches, updates, DLC, and more. First up, you are going to need Xbox 360 games, and then optionally, updates and DLC if you want those. The ROMs GitHub is likely your best resource right off of Google, and that's really the only nudge that I can give you on this topic. The games that you download will be ISO formatted, and all you need to do is unzip them if they come zipped. Now as for where and how to store all of this, just simply create a ROMs folder anywhere you would like on your PC, then create a folder called Xbox 360, and then place everything inside of that. It's the easiest way to do this without complicating anything. All right, so you might be thinking that we're just gonna go download Xenia Canary right off of their GitHub, and that's the best option, so that makes sense, right? But you'd be wrong. There is an absolutely awesome program called Xenia Manager. Xenia Manager is just an absolute must. It simplifies everything to do with Xenia Canary. The installation of it, game patches, automatic updates, per game configurations, exporting saves. Honestly, it's, it's literally everything and we're going to use it. So head to the Xenia Manager GitHub linked in the description and head to releases and then download the latest release. Xenia Manager just got updated to version 3 as of the time of this guide, so it's actually really good timing for us. Grab the latest zip under Assets, click it to download. Then you just need to extract that zip. You can move the extracted folder anywhere that you want. Maybe you have an emulators folder somewhere on your PC and you can throw it in there or leave it wherever it is, it's up to you. Now, to prevent any issues, there are two other things that you might need to download depending on your PC. There is the .NET 9 runtime and the Visual C++ redistributable. Both of them are on the Xenia Manager GitHub and they're also linked in the description and you should download and run both to make sure that you have them installed. So let's go ahead and open the Xenia Manager executable and we are greeted by a screen that kind of tells us nothing, and it can be a little intimidating. Before anything, we need to have Xenia Manager install Xenia Canary. So head to the fourth icon down on the left, and you're gonna see an emulator management page. Let's go ahead and click install under Xenia Canary. A new window is gonna open, and this is actually Xenia Canary, the emulator that is opening, and if you've ever used an Xbox 360, you know that we need to create a profile with a gamer tag. So click create profile, and now just give yourself a gamer tag name. Once that's done, you can go ahead and exit out of the window to get back to Xenia Manager. Now for those wondering, Xenia mouse hook is a way to use your mouse in supported games. It's not something that we're gonna be looking at in today's guide, but that is what that is. Xenia Netplay, is for doing netplay over the internet. And also it's not something we're gonna be looking at today either, but it does exist. Both of these are separate forks of Xenia Canary. So they're not really an add-on experience, they're more of a replacement and a secondary or a third option. Now let's head back to the second icon on the left, which is our games library, or it will be when we add our games. Click the plus icon in the top right and select your ISO formatted games. Mine, again, are in an Xbox 360 folder that we talked about earlier. After a few seconds, your game should populate and you're gonna see them here in a nice grid. You can see them as a list instead by clicking the grid icon at the top and swap between them. Personally, I prefer grid. Now, before we launch any games, there is a lot you should know about and things you should do. For example, right click a game and you get a full menu. We're gonna talk about content later on, so for now, let's go under Patches. Then choose Download Patches. You're gonna get a window to choose your game from the list that matches your title ID. In this case, it is pretty obvious which one is the right one, so select it. Now, when we head back to Patches, you're going to see Configure Patches. Choose that. And there we go. We now have access to this game's patches. So we can enable 60 FPS if you want, or in a lot of other games, there's a lot more options. We'll look at that in a bit. 
Think of patches as mods. They're built in and they're pretty awesome. Continuing on, you can add a shortcut to the desktop or even just to Steam directly, which is awesome. Lastly, there's an option here under Edit Game to edit settings. But this isn't the best place to do this. Instead, close out and now head to the third icon on the left. This is the Game Settings window. You can see a drop down at the top with all of your games that you have added. But here's the best part about this. Click the cloud icon on the top right with the game selected, and it's going to download the best known configuration of settings for this game. You can see the window pop up with what's updated, and it tells us that we do need to save this. So click close, and then click the save icon in the top right. You can think of this as per game settings, something that was a struggle to do using Xenia Canary on its own because you had to edit files and all this sort of thing. Xenia Manager has made it an absolute breeze with a whole user interface to do it. Now, one setting that I do like to enable for all games is full screen. So just enable full screen under display and then click save again so that your games launch in full screen mode. Another option is using Vulkan as a set API under graphics. Play around with it. It might work better in some games and it might be worse in some other games. But let's look at another example with Lost Odyssey. Right click, patches, download patches. You can see here again, it's pretty obvious which one is the right one. So select the one that doesn't have NTSCJ in the file name. If we head into configure patches now, we have the usual options that you would want for Lost Odyssey, like 60 FPS, or disabling depth of field, or motion blur. All of these are things that you usually enable for Lost Odyssey. But again, if we head back to the game settings and load the optimized settings, it loads what typically people recommend for Lost Odyssey to have it working the best, and that way you can actually play it. Don't forget to enable full screen mode and click save. At this point, let's enable some Xenia Manager settings. Head to the bottom left settings cog to get to the settings page. You can change the theme here if it's been burning your eyes, but also let's enable auto update Xenia to keep it updated. You can also enable automatic save backup, and this puts all of your saves nice and neat into a backup folder in the Xenia Manager folder. It gives you a nice spot to back up your saves too in case you want to back those up. Lastly, I like to enable double click to open game, mostly to avoid issues if I accidentally single click a game and it opens. Now, before we actually load up a game, as for pairing a controller to this, I have tried many controllers. All of them are instantly recognized, so I can't say there's an actual issue here. But in the game settings page under user input, you can see input system and a few options. Now, X input is usually the one that most controllers use, and it's also the one that you should probably be using, but I usually just leave this on any, and it works just fine. Just keep an eye on this in case your controller isn't working. All right, so let's load up a game. Just double click it from the game library to get it to load right up. Now, at this point, you can just go ahead and play some games. We're pretty much done. But like most emulators, you're gonna get some stutters, some freezes the first time you play a game, anytime you enter a new area and do all that sort of thing because the shaders are compiling. So you have to get that to compile and then it'll run smooth. To exit, push escape on your keyboard and under file, choose exit. All right, so I promised to show you how to install updates and DLC and also the content menu. Now, just quickly, this method that I'm going to show for installing DLC and updates is a temporary method. And it's only because that they just updated to version three that they haven't added it to Xenia Manager for you to be able to do it in the content menu section. So this will be temporary at some point in the future, the content menu, little menu section, will have an install updates and DLC option that you can use. But for now, you can use this. So to install updates in DLC, open the game that you have them for. So for me, that's gonna be Eternal Sonata. Go to File, Install Content, navigate to your update or DLC file and select it. You should get a pop-up saying success and you can now close out of everything and boot back in to get your content. DLC is the exact same. It'll usually just say Content Type Marketplace in the pop-up, but the idea is still the exact same. You just Install content, go through a few folders, click the file, and it'll install. Now, if you head back to a game, 
right click and go to content, you can choose view installed content. First window shows any saves that you have, but the drop down has more. And if you choose downloadable content, you're gonna see any DLC that you've installed. Or if you go to installer, it'll show you any updates you've installed. You can also use the trash can icon to delete anything that you want. That should be just about it for today. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should be able to do anything that you want in Xenia Manager and Xenia Canary using today's guide and the different timestamps. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro gaming. Support me through YouTube membership if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.